In our studies of Chapter 3, From Genes to Proteins, we'll consider in this lesson the central dogma. Probably the way most of us remember the central dogma would be in simplified form to say DNA goes to RNA goes to protein, but we might have to modify that slightly as we'll see. First of all, DNA is replicated with each division cycle and that replication is semi-conservative. That is to say, one of the parent strains is conserved in each of the two new DNA molecules. In the figure on the bottom right, here we have our DNA parent in blue. We're going to separate each of those two strands and each of those will serve as a template to synthesize the complementary strand in pink. So again, that replication is semi-conservative. In the next step of our process, in transcription, we're going to convert double-stranded DNA into a single-stranded molecule of messenger, or mRNA. In transcription, usually we're transcribing one form to another, but it's the same language, and that's true in this case. It's still nucleic acid, but we're changing the form from DNA to RNA. However, in translation, we're changing languages. We're going from the language of nucleic acid in the mRNA to the language of amino acids in our protein. We'll see how that works in just a moment. And now for our notable exception, viruses. Many of them begin as an RNA genome. And so the simple, simple thinking of the central dogma as going from DNA to RNA to protein isn't applicable in that case. So instead, let's modify that central dogma. Information is passed to protein, but it never begins with protein and goes in the other direction. Let's look at this process of translation. We're going to look at transcription in just a minute, and of course in that process we're going to separate our two strands of DNA and make one messenger RNA or mRNA molecule. In translation, there are three types of RNA that are involved in this process. Obviously, we have the message in the mRNA. The machinery that's going to synthesize our protein for us is the ribosome. And although it contains many proteins, it is mostly ribosomal or rRNA. We also have the T or transfer RNA molecules, and these serve to ferry the amino acids to the ribosome, and they base pair with that codon in the message. It's the tRNA that's really our translator. Of course, the sequence of amino acids is dictated by the genetic code. Here we have a table from your book representing the standard genetic code. It is a triplet code, that is there's a sequence of three nucleotides and there are 64 codons. Now there are three stop codons and that's in the red boxes here, but even then we have 61 codons and only 20 common amino acids and so we say the code is degenerate. That is to say, more than one codon can specify the same amino acid. In the example I've outlined for you here is serine in the blue box, and you can see there are four separate codons, and yet they specify the same amino acid. Notice the only thing that is different is that third nucleotide. We call that the third base wobble. So I can modify that third base, change the identity of the third base, and yet specify the same amino acid. Here's our notable exception, methionine. Only one codon specifies methionine, and that is the universal start codon. The genetic code is universal in almost all living organisms. Let's look more at transcription. So we have two strands of DNA, but which one gets transcribed? Well, in this illustration at the top of your screen, we're going to separate the two molecules of the two strands of DNA, and one of those is going to serve as a template to make our RNA. The nucleotide get, that gets added is determined by the identity of the nucleotide in sequence. So here in our DNA we have the sequence T, G, T, C, G, A, and what gets incorporated into the RNA molecule is the complementary nucleotide, A, C, A, G, C, U. Notice that the DNA is read from 3' prime to 5', prime and the RNA is synthesized from 5' prime to 3'. Prime. Since this strand of DNA is driving the synthesis of the RNA, we call that the template strand. What about that other strand of DNA? Well, if we look and compare the RNA molecule to that DNA strand, remember it's this RNA, this is our mRNA that contains the message we're going to translate, and here's our sequence, ACA, GCU. 
Compare that to the DNA strand at the top, ACA, GCT, identical except that we have T's in places of the U's. Since this strand of DNA is identical to the message that contains the code, it makes sense to call that strand the coding strand. In our next lesson, we'll look at an organism's genome and see how we can compare the differences between species and what can we learn by knowing an organism's genome content.